Today we're going to be designing this character and talk about the process I think we should go through for basically designing any character. In this case, we're designing a playable character. Essentially, this means that we're going to make this first draft work as an idle animation. We do this because it's significantly more important that our character works as an idle animation compared to working as a standalone artwork. Generally, when we make our idle, we want our character to be sort of looking in a 45 degree angle. The reason for this is that we want to be able to tell where our character is pointed. So if it's directed to that direction or this direction. And it also helps our character look a bit less flat. So that the shift between our idle animation and our running animation will be like idle, running, idle, running. Basically, we have some clear difference between when we're running and when we're standing still. And we're basically repeating this process for this new character that we're creating. We're also setting a hard rule already that we're not focusing on any complex shapes. So basically only quite simple shapes. At least not for starters. I'm going to be hand animating this later, so I basically don't want any complex shapes at all. But even if you do want them, I still think that you should start with making the simple shapes work and then add complex shapes later. So if you were intending to use something like Spine 2D, adding sort of small complex details also adds room for error. So keeping it simple tends to be easier and look better, unless you're really skilled. Hopefully at this point, you already kind of know what you want to create. I know what I want to create. I want to create a small, cute, demon and I want a style that is quick and easy to produce. So now we need to start drawing. The first thing we need to solve when we're starting drawing should be reminiscent of the cutscene in Pokemon where it goes who's that Pokemon? If you don't know what I'm talking about in Pokemon they had this small little scene where they showed a silhouette of a Pokemon and you were supposed to guess what Pokemon the silhouette belonged to. We basically need to achieve that same thing. A silhouette that is distinct enough that we could use it to identify our character. If our character looks like a black blob as a silhouette, we are most likely going to have a bad character. So how you generally do this is called thumbnailing. You essentially draw small black shapes, so just the silhouettes, and then when you get something that is kind of nice looking, you start building a character out of it. It's not absolutely necessary that you do this, but even if you don't, this idea or thought should still be in the back of your head. I'm first focusing on the shape that our character has as a silhouette, and then I add details later. So we are focusing on making the shape of our character distinct in some way. So for instance, if we were to black out Hollow Knight, we have these horns. And if we look at the character in Greece, we have this sort of triangle shape that the dress produces. And in Guacamole, we have this big top and sort of small bottom. And even for our mushroom character, there were some choices that were specifically made just so that the silhouette would look slightly better. The small random ears on the cap and the back legs for instance. In our case we're going simple and our collider would just be a regular capsule collider so we want to keep that shape moderately intact. So we're going to limit ourselves to a shape that looks kind of like this but still try to make it as unique as we can. So we're going to make a small sort of demon character which immediately makes me think of sort of tiny devil goats. These type of legs have quite a unique shape so I think that they are something that would be good to emulate but then we need to simplify it. So the key feature of these legs is that they go sort of off center and then back in and sort of semi-triangle-like. And so that's the basic shape that we want to keep and simplify. We're not really caring about the rest of the body as of yet. The arms will basically be the same shape that our mushroom character has. We want to avoid fingers and any type of annoying stuff that would be difficult and annoying to make look good. Squares would have worked fine too, but I prefer the rounder, it's sort of friendlier and nicer. So we can see here that the legs look quite distinct, but we're missing some defining features in the midsection of the body. Since it's a demon, I think that a tail would work, and so we try drawing that. And we can add sort of a spade or a heart at the end to make it a bit more cute and distinct. I still think that we are missing a bit here. It looks a bit too empty. So we can try adding some wings for now. We probably won't want wings because they're a hassle to animate. But we can keep it for now and sort of go back later. Then we add the shape of the head. Same here, we don't want the shape of our head to be completely round because it looks boring. So we start by adding horns. And at this point, I think we have a silhouette that looks kind of decent. So you basically go through this process somewhat. And you maybe make one character, and if it doesn't look that good, you go on and make another silhouette. So you basically start at this end when creating your character. And you can make them quite small so that you focus on the overall shapes of the character. We could have done this using line art or blocking it in, but the thought process will generally be the same. We first care about the shape we're creating, and when we have it, we fix the features of it. This is essentially how I think you should go about creating any asset you make. Not just your character, but also your forest or bushes or any stuff like that. You start from the most basic shape and ensure that that looks good. And once you have that, then you move into making more details. If the overall shape of your asset doesn't work, then whatever details you add won't save it. So I think we can create our line art and see what works. Generally here, I would say that the tail looks good and the legs look quite nice too. We went for really simple arms and they kind of work. The shape here that the wings create is good. 
but the wings themselves would be difficult to animate, so I think we should change them. I think in general, I'm happy with the shape of the body, and now we kind of have our first draft for our line art. This could work. Kind of looks like Piglet from Winnie the Pooh, but we see what we make of it. The body also looks a bit empty at the moment. So I think we can add a sort of bow tie for now. When I've made this first draft of the line art, I generally tend to squish the body and enlarge in the head to make it look a bit more cute. Now that we have our line art and some shape we kind of like, we move on to create a head or a face that we like. We still maintain this idea of something cute, but we want to experiment a bit and see and not settle for our first draft. At this point, we're largely caring about the sort of head shape and also about where the face sits in the head, so sort of the eyes and mouth and nose. And we'll try lots of versions here. When we're doing this, we really need to keep flipping our canvas because our brain will sort of make sense of errors. But if we flip the canvas, these errors become much more noticeable. We can take a look at this image from when I was creating the mushroom character. If we flip it, we can see that it looks really unbalanced and strange. And so we would paint on this flipped version until it starts looking good. And then we can flip back. And we'll just keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. This is especially important when making our game character because our character needs to look good from both sides. Some of these faces that we're creating will look horrendously ugly, but that is fine. We can see that for whatever I'm trying, I try and add some protrusions to the head to get a decent silhouette. And I also add some patterns to the face so that it doesn't feel so empty. I'm essentially not stopping here at all until I get something that excites me a little bit. And I'll say that these two versions were actually the first ones that kind of excited me. But I don't trust myself at this point, so I send it for other people to take a look at. I generally recommend this, but you absolutely have to find people that will be a bit brutal. And when they say that they like it, they actually mean it and they're not being nice. And in this case, the ones I asked also thought that these two were okay. But they generally preferred this one, which I also think fits a bit better as a demon. This other one looks slightly more like a robot. So we have our head shape, some cool horns, and some ears. And now we can try different eyes and mouths. I start with creating the eyes and mouths that I've created for my mushroom character, but I also make a few new ones. Here I think this combo looks the best. With all of this, we move on to color schemes. Here I just try a few versions. I don't want many colors here, at most two or three. The more you add, the less likely they are to feel unified. But we can try a few combinations. I went through this exact same process when I was creating my mushroom character, where I kind of had the shape of the character that I wanted. And then I added a coat to create some more visual interest in the midsection. And then I went for a color scheme with three colors and tried lots of different versions. Now we need to check that this works and that we can place this in any of our scenes. And it looks kind of decent and fitting. Before we settle for this completely, we want to check that we can flip this character to a running animation and that it will still work. Because sometimes you'll end up in a situation where it looks good from one angle, but you can't make sense of it or it doesn't read as well from any other angle. So this is not quite our running animation, but it will sort of work as a first draft. It can still look really ugly, which it does here. I've only done this quickly. I just want to see, can I do this? Can I fix this eventually? To see if the shape itself makes sense, then I'm going to tweak it and make it look good later. I want the channel to have something related to all art necessary to create a platformer. For that reason, I'm using this character to create a really small precision platformer, a minimum viable product, if you will. Our first video was to create this small untitled demon character. And then my next video on this topic will either be project management or animating this character. If you have a preference, feel free to write so in the comments. If you liked this video, I really think that this one would be valuable to watch next. I kind of glossed over the idea of what I wanted by just saying we wanted a cute demon. But I actually do have quite defined ideas for what that entails. And even though I have a more fluid thought process, it's all backed by quite rigorous constraints that I tend to follow. And you should too. So watch it. Thanks for watching. Bye.